welcome to my channel. If you're new here, welcome for the first time. If you're returning, welcome back. I'm Dr. Kate Boyd. I'm a professor of piano, and I'm here to help you take your playing to the next level. Today, I'm going to talk about how to play the piano without looking down at your hands. Playing the piano while looking back and forth between the music in your hands is a habit that can really hold you back from playing the piano easily and fluently. Playing the piano without looking down is like touch typing. You can look at the music and your fingers will learn where to go. This is a skill that can definitely be practiced. So why is it even important to learn to play the piano without looking down? Learning a new skill takes time and effort, so why even bother? Well, first of all, it'll help you play with much more continuity and fluidity you will be able to just play and then you won't have to keep checking whether the note you're about to play is correct. You won't hesitate as much because your fingers will be going where they need to go automatically. Another very important reason that you want to learn to play the piano without looking down at your hands by necessity is because it frees up mental bandwidth to actually focus on the music. Because if you're spending your time and energy looking up and down and up and down and up and down back and forth while you play, what's happening is all of your attention is based on visual processing because you're looking everywhere. And then there's really not very much bandwidth left over in order to focus on the sounds that you're making or how it feels under the hands. Another important reason to learn to play the piano without looking down is it'll make you a more confident player because you'll be able to start trusting that your fingers will play the notes you intend them to without having to double check yourself all the time by looking down at your hands. Also, playing the piano without looking down at your hands all the time is incredibly helpful for sight reading. Playing the piano by touch is actually a prerequisite to sight read well, because if you have to constantly check what you're doing by looking at your hands, then you're not gonna be able to sight read well because sight reading relies on being able to play with rhythmic continuity through a piece the very first time you look at it. And therefore, you have to be able to keep your eyes on the music while you play and just use your hands and fingers to feel the keys. All right, I've made a pretty good case for why you should play the piano without looking down. But if it's so important, why don't we just automatically do it? Well, I think there are two main reasons. First of all, there's a lot of moving around between hand positions that takes place at the piano. You have to play a note, for example, down here, and then I have to move up here, and then I have to go back down here, and I'm moving all over the keyboard. And that can be a little nerve wracking. The tendency is that you wanna double check that you're about to play the right note. You don't wanna be playing all the wrong notes and then correcting them after you play. So you look to make sure you're over the right notes when you have to move your hand and change hand positions. And that's linked to the second reason that I think holds people back from playing without looking down at their hands, anxiety. If you're not used to it, it can be a little bit nerve wracking to play, but not watch what your hands are doing. Learning how to play the piano without looking down at your hands is like learning how to drive a car without watching your hands on the steering wheel. Of course, you can drive a car and you look ahead at where you're going and your hands naturally adjust the steering wheel to point the car where you need it to go. Now, here are some practical suggestions on how to learn to play the piano without looking down at your hands. The first three suggestions I have are related and they all involve depriving yourself of your ability to see. You can practice with your eyes closed, you can practice with the room completely dark, and you can practice while looking up at the place where the ceiling and the wall meet. When I was in music school and I was practicing, I would go to the practice rooms at night, turn the lights off, and then play with the room completely dark. I would practice through my recital program or whatever I was working on, and I would just see if I could feel my way through the pieces. It's a very useful practice technique. But a lot of times you can't practice in the complete dark because there are ambient lights even when you turn the lights off. If that's the case, just close your eyes or look straight up at the wall and ceiling where they meet as you play. If you don't have your music memorized, just look straight at your music and don't let yourself look at your hands. My second suggestion is to practice your scales and arpeggios without looking at your hands. So get in the habit of practicing whatever combination of warm up exercises you do for the day, but just look up instead of looking down. So for example, here's what it looks like to play scales without looking at your hands. I'm gonna start with C major. And I'm looking up. And now A minor, I feel my way down two notes to A minor. down to 
F major, two more notes down. Etc. So you can do this for arpeggios, you can do this for whatever warm-up exercises you're used to playing. If it's too hard for you to play your usual warm-up exercise at a, the tempo you're used to while you're not looking at your hands, then just simplify it. Do one hand, do it slower. If it's hard to do multiple octaves, then just do one octave until you get comfortable with it. These are the basic patterns and building blocks that make up so much of the classical piano repertoire. And this is why practicing scales and arpeggios is incredibly helpful at learning to not look at your hands. And so if you're able to do them without even looking, that will really free you up to look at your music, to look up, to look at other things that are happening on the keyboard at the same time. But especially, it will free you up to listen. My third tip is to follow the fingering that's printed in your music, or at least use it as a starting point. Very often, I see students kind of ignore it or override it, but the fingering, which is almost always done by a professional editor, is the result of years of expertise. The editors who put that fingering into the music have an understanding of the topography of the keyboard, the mechanics of playing the piano, and the feel of moving around the keyboard. So my recommendation is to start by assuming that the fingering printed in your score is good, and then after you've practiced it several times, see how your hand differs from what they recommend, then make adjustments from that point. I think over time, you'll start to discern patterns and ways of getting around the keyboard that are consistent and that make it easier for you to play without looking. My fourth tip is to spend time feeling the intervals. We focus on the sensory input from our eyes. This black dot means we put down this lever but there is sensory input from our ears to tell us if a note is wrong. And we neglect sensory input from our fingers to feel if we're over the note before playing it. People often have the habit of playing a note, checking it, looking and seeing the next note, then playing it, checking it, and so forth. And then if it's wrong, they correct it after they hear that it's wrong. Use the topography of the keyboard, the black white key patterns, use intervals and use your own fingers as reference points when moving around the keyboard. Something like 70 or 80% of our sensory input is processed by the visual parts of our brain. So it's important to actually consciously make an effort to become aware of our other senses. It's easy to go back and forth between looking at the music and looking at our hands, but by doing so, we are completely turning off our awareness of how it feels to touch the keys. My fifth tip to learn how to play the piano without looking down at your hands is to use your arm like a ruler or a tape measure. The analogy I like to think of is the way that a tailor measures a garment. If you go to the tailor, the tailor will take out a measuring tape and they'll stretch it out to measure the length of a hem or the length of a dress, length of a sleeve, and your arm can do that exact same thing. Your arm can be like the measuring tape, measuring the distance from one point of the keyboard to another. And this is something you can memorize. So let's say I'm on middle C. And then I want to move up an octave, and I have to go here. So what my arm is doing is measuring this distance. This is an octave, no matter if I go from C to C, or D to D, or E to E. So in that sense, it is like the tape measure in that it's a reliable and predictable distance that you can memorize. You can start to teach your arm how far it is to travel between different parts of the keyboard. This will help you when you have big jumps or things that you can't just use your fingers um, as reference points because you have to go too far. And so you can do an exercise where you, for example, look up or close your eyes, and then you just measure back and forth now, I know how to do that because I've been playing the piano for a long time and I've been practicing that, but probably at first for you, you'll do this and then not really know how far that is. And so you can double check by looking down and playing or play and then verify. And then ask yourself, did I overshoot? Did I undershoot? Do I need to move farther to the right next time or the, the left next time? And then over time, you start to memorize those distances and it starts to become a reliable indicator of how to move around the piano without looking down at your hands. My sixth tip for learning how to play the piano without looking down is to actually cover your hands. Now, I have a fairly unwieldy way of doing this right now, but this is the lid to a container 
and I'm just going to like hook it here. And now I can't see my hands, so I can play. And then that allows me to look at my music and play without using peripheral vision to look down at my hands. So try something like that. You can use a piece of cardboard, you can use the lid of a, of a plastic bin, or just anything that will extend out over the keyboard and prevent you from seeing it. I've also done this exercise just by putting fabric over my hands while I play. That is another way to keep yourself from seeing it using peripheral vision while you look at the music. My seventh tip that will really help you learn how to play the piano without looking at your hands is to consistently sit at the center of the keyboard. But here's the thing, a lot of people are surprised to learn that middle C is not the actual center of the keyboard. We just call it middle C because it's the C that is in the middle of the keyboard from all of the C's on the keyboard. The actual middle of the keyboard are the two keys, E and F, above middle C. I'll prove it. Start at the opposite edges of the keyboard and just come in chromatically. The middle of the keyboard is the E and F above middle C. That is the center, and notice that is where the decal of the manufacturer is located. This is where you should be centering yourself when you practice, and everything else goes out from that point of the center of the keyboard. So when you're practicing how to feel your way around the keyboard, make sure you're sitting right in front of the E and the F in the center of the keyboard. Also, make sure you always sit in the same part of the keyboard because then your arm will start to learn how to measure distances from that center point and then you won't only be relying on your fingers and your eyes. Like with any skill, repetition is key. Practice playing the piano without looking down at your hands every time you practice and you will gradually improve. Don't be discouraged if you make mistakes or find it challenging at first. With time and practice, you will be able to play the piano without looking at your hands with ease. I made another video that's a deep dive into playing the piano without looking at your hands. In the video, I talk about the main mindset shift you need to adopt in order to learn this skill. And then I talk about three specific tactics in detail. You can check it out by clicking right there. I'll see you in the next video. And until then, happy practicing.